Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I first of all, uh, it's uh, my great honor uh, to participate in Humble College, and I thank organizers for giving me this invitation. And in this talk, I will present our recent study uh, on the system of uh, dark state uh, stationary dark state proton dressed by uh, readable state dipole dipole injection, and we hope to utilize this system uh, to the realized BEC. Okay, uh, let me first give a, a brief in introduction. So, so far, uh, there are two kinds of uh, both sides condensation. Uh, one is the atomic or molecular BC, and the other one is the, um, the external peroton BC. So, uh, the audience here uh, must be very familiar with atomic BC, so I will not e elaborate on it. So, I quickly go through uh, the external peroton BC. So um, the system of exon proton BC uh, has a quantum wave structure longitudinally and with an optical micro uh, cavity to enhance the light matter interaction. So it's a really a two-dimensional system, has the KT uh, transition. And the, some, uh, the lifetime of the exon proton is about uh, less than 100 picosecond, which is pretty short. And typically, the summarization time uh, is close to the lifetime. So most of the exon proton BEC uh, not, are not in, really in the equilibrium system. And on the other hand, uh, the mass of exon proton uh, is relatively light. It's about 10 to minus 5 times of the electron mass. So even at a moderate uh, exon proton density, the transition temperatures can still larger than one Kelvin. So our motivation is uh, whether we can create a new type of BEC uh, in between. Okay, so actually uh, the idea of creating a new type BEC has been there. So uh, in this paper, uh, Fresh R and co-worker, they propose uh, to utilize uh, dark state proton uh, and make land stationary to uh, realize BEC. So, um, dark state proton, a previous DSP, is the superposition of the profile and the ground state coherence. They uh, can be given by this expression, where the omega p is the probability frequency, rho to one is the ground state coherence, and omega c is the copying Rabi frequency. So, one year after uh, the proposed idea, uh, my group has realized a stationary DSP. Actually, you just uh, turn on the four and the copying field to create the photon inside the atomic median, make them moving back and forth and trap inside the atoms. So I will, uh, using this timing diagram and this uh, gray level uh, map to show how we create a stationary <coughs> DSP. So uh, in this uh, uh, gray level, map, we show uh, pro intensity as a function of position and the time. So first, we send in pro pulse in the forward direction in the presence of uh, forward copying field. So this pro pulse is just moving in the forward direction. So after the entire pro pulse enter the atom, so we quickly turn off the copying field. So for this time of period, there's no light at all because we convert the pro photon into the atomic coherence. And at the time around 100 uh, units, so we simultaneously turn on the coupling field in the forward and backward uh, direction, as shown by this timing ground here. So we just uh, create a photon, they just moving back and forth in the atom media, so they become stationary. Um, okay. So uh, for the uh, moving dark state proton, DSP, actually the equation is just given by, by, by this one. Uh, actually, it's also the slow light equation, and, uh, and this term is just the uh, uh, group velocity of slow light. And if we create a, a stationary DSP, so the wave function of the DSP just become, has the forward and backward component, and if we consider the three-dimensional Maxwell equation, then the equation of motion of stationary DSP, just, uh, just like a, a, a 
uh, Schrodinger equation very much uh, with a uh, mass of a particle given by this expression here. So if they, they exist, the uh, interaction between DSPs, so uh, the Schrodinger equation will become nonlinear, where this term uh, just give, give the mean field energy, and this term just give you the loss of DSP. Okay, and it was proposed to utilize the skin of this uh, nonlinear curve type interaction uh, to, for the summarization. And these two figures showing uh, the momentum distribution of dark, uh, stationary dark state proton before and after the BEC. And after BEC, all the proton go to lower the momentum state. So at that time, uh, we estimate whether we can achieve BEC or not with the stationary uh, DSP. However, typically, curve type linearity is very weak. So, uh, so we just uh, forget about it for, for a while. Then later, we start our readable ex experiment. Then we consider whether we can use the readable state, uh, dipole dipole interaction, uh, instead of a linear curve type interaction to mediate uh, the summarization. So, um, so now I will give you, uh, uh, show you some of our study on the readable, readable state dipole dipole interaction. So uh, uh, the EIT or slow light is a coherent induced phenomena. So we can use the slow light uh, to characterize our experimental system. So we're using uh, this uh, transition diagram. Uh, we have this uh, uh, profile driving the transition from ground state to uh, intermediate state and using the copying field to drive the, from the intermediate state to readable state. So uh, we study the decoherence rate in the readable ELE system at a moderate uh, copying field uh, Rabi frequency. We have a decoherence rate about 2 pi times 30 kilohertz, which is very small as compared to uh, DDI-induced decoherence rate. And also uh, in the readable ELE system, uh, the interaction time between the DSP is just the propagation delay time. So we measure the delay time of our slow light, which is about two, uh, two point, uh, which is about two microsecond. So we have our, uh, I think, relatively low decoherence rate. Also have a, a sufficient long uh, interaction time. And uh, since we are dealing with the weak interaction region, which uh, so this uh, RB is just bucket radius. And RA is just a, a half mean distance between the readable atoms. And we can utilize this uh, uh, nearest neighbor distribution uh, to derive the analytical formula of DDI-induced decoherence rate, uh, and also uh, DDI-induced two-photon detuning. And this DDI effect is proportional to square root of C6. Uh, C6 is a Van der Waal coefficient, and also uh, proportional to the product of uh, atomic density and readable state population, which is a readable atom density, and also proportional to omega c. So uh, this proportionality are just very uh, common in many uh, several papers. And also uh, due to the different model, the coefficients will be uh, very different. And the interesting part is about uh, the decoherence rate and the two-fold detuning depends on the uh, copying detuning uh, differently. So, uh, so we measure the uh, phase shift and also attenuation coefficient as a function of uh, pro Rabi frequency square or pro intensity. A higher pro intensity indicate a, a, a larger readable atom density or stronger uh, dipole dipole uh, interaction. So, so uh, we measure the phase shift with different detuning, also attenuation with the different detuning, and uh, it, they are expected. And it's interesting to know uh, with a positively, positive one uh, detuning, so you can have a larger phase shift, but almost have no attenuation. For a negative uh, detuning, you have a, a small phase shift, but a large uh, attenuation. So in view of collision, Phase shift is the consequence of elastic collision. 
and loss at nation is a consequence of English that collision. And elastic collision can help summarization, which is good. So uh, it's better to choose uh, the positive detuning. Okay, um, similar to the atomic boson condensation, we use time of flight image to measure the photon momentum distribution transversely. <coughs> so we set up uh, this image system at the far field to measure the probing uh, intensity profile. And the probing size in the atom cloud so is only around a few tenths of micron, very small, tiny. And on the image plan, it's about a few millimeter. So if you have a larger probing size on the image, it's indicate uh, the photon uh, propagate uh, transversely faster. And if you have a small probing size, it means uh, the probing uh, propagate transversely slowly. So uh, figure A, B, C are three probing fire with no dipole-dipole interaction with a moderate uh, in strength of the dipole-dipole interaction and with the large the large dipole-dipole uh, interaction. As we can see, uh, the beam profile becomes smaller, that means the photon momentum distribution becomes smaller. When photon uh, leave the atoms, they also carry the momentum of polariton. So we can use this uh, uh, photon momentum distribution to derive uh, polariton momentum distribution. And as we can see, uh, this polariton uh, density, uh, momentum distribution indicate uh, with a higher uh, DDI, double dipole interaction, the temperature become lower. So this, this is a cooling effect we observed. Okay, uh, now I show you how we create a stationary uh, DSP with the DDI. So this is the transition scheme. We can combine uh, stationary dark state proton DSP and with the readable state uh, dipole dipole interaction DDI. So in the system of state one, two, and three, so it's a lambda type EIT system, we can create a stationary DSP. And in the system of state two, four, five, and uh, we use the two photon transition to drive the Rabi oscillation between ground state two and the excited state five, which is a uh, readable read state uh, can produce the DDI. And so in this system, uh, the, the proton wave function will become uh, the superposition of the uh, pro-photon moving forward and backward. Also the atomic coherence uh, is also a superposition of the ground state coherence rho 2, 1 and the readable coherence rho 5, 1. So, so, so this is the way we can uh, make uh, Proton stationary also uh, carrying the dipole dipole interaction. Okay, uh, here are the experiment data. Uh, in the top figure, we measure uh, the output proposed signal as a function of time. So, red circle are the data, and the red line are the theoretical prediction. So, in the left figure, uh, there is no DDI. So during uh, this period of uh, station DSP, we can still see some uh, polar leakage out of uh, atoms. So we can, we can. Th this is the uh, station DSP period. And uh, on the right figure, uh, we apply the two form transition. Not only have a, a stationary DSP, we can also have a, a dipole dipole interaction and drive the rubber. Rabi oscillation and the leak, this leakage just showing the Rabi oscillation when we convert all the population uh, from the uh, state five, then there is almost no leakage at all, as shown by this uh, uh, note in the in this uh, period. And we can convert uh, after two pi pulse, we can we can convert all the population in state five back to state two, then we retrieve our signal. Then due to the dipole dipole interaction. Uh, induce the, uh, the attenuation, the retrieve energy becomes smaller. So in the bottom figure, so we measure uh, the phase evolution of the output propulse. Pro and the black circle are just a reference. Actually, there are three sets of black circle. And because they are complete overlap to, to each other, we just plus, uh, plus one. And uh, the 
red circle, blue circle, and the magenta circle are the uh, pro, pro phase evolution uh, at the three different uh, DDI uh, strands. So red circle with almost no DDI, and blue circle with a moderate strength DDI, and the magenta uh, circle with the uh, largest uh, DDI. So, so we can see a larger uh, double dipole detection resulting in a larger phase shift. And we systematically measure uh, this uh, uh, DDI-induced alternate coefficient as a function of pro Rabi fring square. Also, uh, the DDI-induced the phase shift as a uh, pro Rabi fring square. So, so the blue circles uh, are the data without DDI, so the attenuation almost the same. The red circle are measured with the DDI, as we can see, as we increase the pro intensity, uh, which just equivalent to increase the DDI strength and the uh, attenuation increase. And similarly, uh, with no dipole dipole detection, uh, the phase shift is nearly zero. And with the DDI dipole dipole detection, the phase shift increase uh, with the DDI strength. So uh, this uh, blue and the red shaded area are the theoretic prediction uh, with the consideration of the uncertainty in the optical depths, also in the uh, ground state decoherence rate. So the consistency between uh, experiment data and the theoretical prediction and demonstrate uh, we can create uh, this uh, uh, stationary dark state proton uh, dressed by, by the DDI. And we further measure uh, DDI effect uh, at a different principal quantum number. Uh, quantum number are 20A, uh, 30, 32, 35, and 38. So uh, we plot this uh, um, dipole dipole interaction induced uh, the attenuation coefficient as a function of a square root C sig and they form a straight line as, a, as expected. So this is another evidence, the stationary uh, dark state proton, like carrying uh, dipole dipole interaction. Okay, conclusion. Uh, we estimate uh, the present experimental condition uh, as the following. The transition temperature is about four millikelvin, and the temperature of our uh, stationary dark state proton is about four microkelvin. And we, uh, we obtain uh, by the formula in this paper. So uh, according to the uh, phase shift measurement, we estimate the collision rate is about 33 megahertz. So I think we, we, our system uh, is ready uh, for the search for the BEC. However, we still have a few things to do before we can really test whether we can have a BEC or not. Okay. Uh, with this slide, I want to thank my collaborator, uh, Gedeminas, uh, Julius, Marcus, Theodora, Wende, uh, Yixing, uh, Yingchen, and uh, Yongfan. I also acknowledge the financial support, Foundation of Science, uh, Technology Council of Taiwan, also Taiwan Latvia Lithuania Collection Program. So this photo showing showing uh, uh, the member of my uh, group and those with uh, initial of their name uh, are, have, have have or had participated in in the experiment I mentioned in this talk. Particularly, I thank uh, my postdoc Bang Jun. Uh, also, uh, my PhD student, Ke Tang, they have participated uh, in this experiment for many years, and Ke Tang just graduated uh, last year. So with that, with that, I thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> thank you very much. Before I open discussion, I have a short question to yeah. you. What is written on the last picture? What is, there is a, 
uh, written something in Chinese. Can you yeah. translate okay. it for um, me, it's um, okay. Uh, we went to this uh, giant uh, forest. They have uh, this uh, uh, gigantic tree. That's the entrance. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So now, serious questions now, please. Well, this 40 millikelvins that you mentioned for critical temperature is this the highest available. In, Four well, millikelvin, not, yeah. Not only in your experiment, but worldwide. Well, this millikelvin seems to be very. I yeah, I think the main reason is due to the, the mass of the uh, stationary dark state proton is pretty light. Okay, it's not like, um, um, like the roughly less than the electron mass, okay, as compared to the air tensor molecules. So, le less reason they can have a very high. Uh, transition temperature, even at a moderate uh, density. Well, uh, I remember people talking about room temperature, critical temperature being in the range of room temperature for these polaritons, but that's... For, for exton, uh, exton polariton BC, uh, some world really have a transition at room temperature, 300 yeah. Kelvin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More questions? Yes. So, so what would be advantages of this BEC compared to, or maybe new, new features compared to atomic and uh, this polariton, okay. exciton polariton? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a good question. Um, we did not really think of that, but we work on the proposal. Uh, we think, uh, can, can you go back to the slide? Because I did not pay much uh, time to, okay. Uh, let me see, go ahead. Okay, so if you look at the, this slide here, um, the mass is about 100 of electron mass and density is 10 to 10 uh, cubic centimeter per cubic centimeter, one millikelvin of transient temperature and the uh, lifetime is one microsecond. So uh, this is the some uh, busy system can be quickly produced, okay, uh, with dipole-dipole interaction. Then you can bring them to the ground state. Well, I, I'm wondering whether they are still uh, maintain the uh, coherent matter wave or not, but I believe so. So you can also uh, keep this BEC for a long time. All right. Um, in my opinion, uh, this um, time scale, temperature scale, mass scale is very different from atomic BEC and the uh, exon polariton BEC. So something in interesting. Uh, my come from this platform. Yes, please. Right, uh, ET for for the uh, Rydberg interaction. What what's yeah. the estimate for the for the healing length? So, is there any chance of seeing eventually vortex or something like this? I don't know. You know. Yeah. So I, maybe we can discuss more after the uh, after uh, coffee break at the bar coffee break. Okay, I see no question, no more questions, so let's thank the speaker and the all speakers of this session. Okay, thank you.